Hi everyone, welcome to our second video from section 14.6, which will focus on the gradient vector. So in our last video, we studied the directional derivative, and we saw that if f is a differentiable function of x and y, then f has a directional derivative in the direction of any unit vector u, and that we can find the directional derivative of f in the direction of u by taking the partial derivative of f with respect to x and multiplying by a, that x component of u, plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y times b, which is the y component of u. Now we notice here that this formula can be thought of as a dot product as the dot product of a vector whose components are the partial derivatives with respect to x and y with the vector ab. And notice that that vector ab is of course the vector u, the vector whose direction we are hoping to travel in. And so this vector whose components are the partial derivatives of f turns out to be a really important vector in calculus. It's called the gradient vector. So the gradient vector of f is the vector function whose components are given by the partial derivatives of our function. And our notation here for the gradient you see is this upside down triangle um, gradient of f. And so now we have kind of a nice shorthand notation for our directional derivative. We can find the directional derivative by taking the dot product of the gradient of f with the unit vector u. All right, let's see that in action. So here we have the function x e to the y plus y e to the z plus z e to the x. So we're going to first find the gradient of f and then use that to find the directional derivative of f at the origin in the direction of the vector 5, 1, negative 2. So here we go. We first write down our formula for the gradient of f. So this is the vector whose components are made up of the partial derivatives. And since our function f is a function of x, y, and z, then our gradient will have three components because we'll have a partial derivative with respect to x, with respect to y, and with respect to z. So here we go. So we start with the partial derivative with respect to x, which is e to the y plus z e to the x. Then we have the partial derivative of f with respect to y, which is x e to the y plus e to the z. And finally, the partial derivative of f with respect to z, which is y e to the z plus e to the x. So here's the answer to part a. Here's the gradient of f. Now, when we go to find the directional derivative, we need to remember that we always want to work with a unit vector. And we notice here that the length of the vector v that we've been given is the square root of 5 squared plus 1 squared plus negative 2 squared. So it's the square root of 30. So we're going to need a unit vector that points in the same direction as v. And so a unit vector in the same direction as v, we'll call that vector u, is going to be our vector v divided by its length. So we'll have the vector 5 over the square root of 30, 1 over the square root of 30, negative 2 over the square root of 30. All right, now I'm out of room, so I'm going to go to a new slide. Using our gradient, there's our gradient, and there's our unit vector. So to find that directional derivative of f, in the direction of u, we note that it's the dot product of the gradient of f with the vector u. And so taking the dot product of those two vectors, we have 5 over the square root of 30 times e to the y plus z e to the x plus 1 over the square root of 30 times x e to the y plus e to the z minus 2 over the square root of 30 times y e to the z plus e to the x. And so this is the rate of change of f in the direction of u. And in particular, we were asked to find the directional derivative at the origin. So evaluating our directional derivative when x, y, and z are all 0, we get that our rate of change at the origin in the direction of u 
is 4 over the square root of 30. Great. Now, new question. Suppose we want to know in which direction our function f is changing the fastest and what that maximum rate of change is. The answer is the following theorem. Suppose that f is a differentiable function of two or three variables, then the maximum value of the directional derivative is the length of the gradient. And it occurs when u has the same direction as the gradient vector. So the maximum value of our directional derivative is the length of the gradient and it occurs when we're traveling in the direction of the gradient vector. Now I don't do a lot of proofs in these YouTube videos but this is my favorite proof in all of multivariable calculus so I'm going to go through it. It's short and sweet I promise. So we know, right, that we can find our directional derivative by taking the dot product of the gradient of f with u. And one of the formulas for the dot product says that the dot product can be computed by taking the length of our gradient times the length of u times the cosine of the angle theta between those two vectors. So theta here is the angle between our gradient vector and the vector u. But now remember that u is a unit vector, right? So its length is 1. And now the largest, the maximum this value can possibly be is going to occur when cosine is 1. And cosine is 1 when theta is 0. So the maximum value of the directional derivative will be the length of that gradient. And it will occur when the angle between u and the gradient is 0. So it will occur when u is pointing in the same direction as the gradient vector. I promised you it was short and sweet. It's my favorite proof. Thanks for indulging me. Let's see this in action. So let's find the maximum rate of change of the function sine of xy at the point 1, 0 and the direction in which it occurs. So we start with our gradient vector which is the vector whose components are the partial derivatives of our function. Our partial derivative with respect to x is y, cosine of xy, and our partial derivative with respect to y is x, cosine of xy. Now let's evaluate at the point 1, 0, and so our gradient vector is the vector 0, 1. Now, according to our theorem, the maximum rate of change is in the direction of our gradient vector. So in the direction of the vector 0, 1 and the maximum rate of change is the length of that gradient vector. So the length of the vector 0, 1 which is 1. Great. Here's one final example for you to try on your own. If f is the function xy plus yz plus xz Find the directional derivative at the point 1, negative 1, 3 in the direction of the point 2, 4, 5 and then determine the maximum rate of change of f at the point p. So I encourage you to pause the video, try this example on your own and then see if your answer matches mine. If you need a little bit of help getting started in part a for that directional derivative you need a vector, right? So if you think of v as the vector from p to q, and you, of course, want to make that into a unit vector. So see if that helps you get started. So now find the directional derivative of f in the direction of the vector u using your dot product of the gradient with u. You can find your directional derivative. And at the point 1, negative 1, 3, you get the value 22 over the square root of 30. So that's the answer to part A. And then for part B, what is the maximum rate of change of F? So that maximum rate of change is, again, the length of the gradient vector. And so the square root of 20. Great. That's all for this video on gradient vectors and maximizing directional derivatives. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.